Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day, a wonderful day, and happy Wednesday. Happy Workflow Wednesday. I'm very, very excited about today's video because we're doing something that we've already done before that we've been familiar with. Can you guess what, what it is? Drum roll, please. We are going to be creating a subflow. Yes. We're going to be creating a subflow for a very common process. And this common process is the creating of a change request. And as you know, creating change requests is a very common service now process, as well as creating incidents, creating requests, etc. So we are we're going to build our own process based on custom requirements through the subflow. So let's bring out what we're going to be doing or at creating in our subflow today. We're going to be creating a subflow called change request and we're going to be setting an assignment group on this change request. So let's go to our subflow and put it together. I already have it opened, but to get to it, you search up flow designer, um, a process automation on your all menu and it should come up. So, click on upload. As you see, we have inputs and outputs, no triggers. So this means that the subflow would have to be called. And you guys remember what inputs and outputs are, right? Let me let me refresh your memory, but I'm gonna make it like really simple so we can understand. So for an input, input is like what I need to create something. I need this and this and that, and this should create me something like a record. An output is like the result what comes from that input, what's been executed from that input. So um, I put this and this together to give me a record and what comes from that, um, let's say like the record number that can be our output or something like that, you know? Okay, so let's, so for this, we're not going to be doing inputs and outputs first. We're going to be, um, creating an action first. We're going to be adding an action first. So our action is going to be create a change request. So I'm going to scroll down to all the application scopes and click on the ITSM application scope. I'm going to select this one, create emergency change, because we're looking for a generic process. And if we were to click on create normal change, we know that normal change are usually derived from incidents and we just want something generic. So now that we have this action, we see these fields that needed to be, that needed values. And the question is, how are we gonna get the values for these fields? We need to pass it from our input parameter. So I'm gonna go back to input right here and add my field. So now I'm going to put these parameters back in my action. Description. Description. Now our change request has been created. It needs to be assigned to a particular group. And so for that, we need that assignment group's information. So we quickly need to create yet one more input. Now, I want to update this emergency change record with an assignment group. So, on my action, I click on... So, right now, we have 
created successfully an emergency change request and we've also updated it. So now we need an output. We need to create an output. So whenever this record has been created and updated, it's meant to have a change number. And that's where we're going to pass in our output. So now we would be returning this output. And in order for us to do that, we're going to go to Flow Logic and on the bottom, scroll all the way down to Assign Subflow Output. Click on the change request that was created. Where our value will be coming from? Our value will be coming from this change request that's created. Boom, and we're done. So a brief overview of what we quickly just did. We created a subflow responsible for emergency change based on assignment group, short description and description, which are our inputs and outputs. And then we create this emergency change, update it, and return the change number. So as we know, this is automatically saved. We see this cute little bit cloud button right here and remember subflows cannot trigger itself that's why it's usually called from a flow or a script but before we call this um, subflow and before we call it from a flow let's test it first to just make sure it's working Okay, we see that our test was completed successfully. This was the change record that was created. And then it got updated with the assignment group number. I mean, with the assignment group, I'm sorry. And then our we get returned the change number right here. So let's take a quick look at what the change record looks like. Okay, boom, we have our assignment group and our short description and description. So perfect, perfect, perfect. So now let's go back. So for our use case to add this subflow to our flow, we are going to do something simple. So let's go to our, our incident record so as I'm talking about it, it makes sense. So for our use case, it's going to be that whenever a incident record is resolved and its resolution state is resolved by change and its resolution notes so whenever the state on this is resolved right and on our form section our resolution code is resolved by change and our resolution notes has some type of value that's when the subflow should get triggered Right. Okay. So let's put that into action. So we go to flows. So our trigger is going to be updated. And what table are we updating? We're updating the incident table. <clears throat> and our condition, our condition is going to be when state. Changes to resolve. And So when state changes the result and resolution code is resolved by change, that is when our subflow should trigger. So we need to also make sure that to publish this, 
so it shows up on our subflow when we want to search it up under action. So, under action, type in your subflow. So we see our mandatory input parameters. So what should our short our description be? I'm sorry. So my description is going to be my incident record. No, not incident record itself, but its resolution notes. So let me just search up resolution. And then my short description is going to be the incident record short description. My assignment group couldn't be any. I'm gonna choose application analyst. So our create change process request is done. Now I want that the change, whenever the create change has, the change request has been processed, um, the change number should populate on the incident related records form section. So this related records form section, it has a change request um, field. So the number should populate right here. So remember on our subflow outputs, we were being returned a change number. So I'm going to click on action and click on What I'm updating is my trigger record, my incident record, and the fields I'm updating is my change request field from where, from here. Well, we are done. So let's do a high level breakdown of what we just did. We created a subflow and a flow. The subflow is created, the subflow we created, I'm sorry, is a process for creating a change request and we can use the subflow numerous times in numerous flows. And for us to call the subflow in this scenario, we created a flow, um, called, we called it incident created by change and we made it that whenever our incident um, state is resolved and our resolution code is resolved by change. The subflow is called, we call the subflow and we create the change request. It's an emergency change request. And then we update our incident record with the change number. And now let's activate our flow and we're gonna go ahead and go test it as well. So let's see our flow and subflow in action. I'm going to go to, well, we can use this one actually. We we'll keep the state as resolved and resolution information will be resolved by change. We can keep the random resolution notes and just fill in our stuff. Fill in our short description and let's save it. Okay, so our flow, our change request record should have been already created. And if we go over here, voila, we see our change number. Woohoo, go us. So that verifies that our change, our subflow works and our flow also works as well. Let's just take a quick look at the change request record and boom. It works. We have the assignment group populated with what we designated it to be, our description with what we wanted it to be, and our short description with what we wanted it to be. Yay! Another successful flow designer implementation. Good job. I'm so proud of you. And I hope you have fun doing this with me and we'll go try to replicate it on your own PDI. But until then, I will see you next time. Have a good and wonderful day. Bye.